What's up everyone, Jason here from PyQuant News. Today we're gonna to have a little bit of fun. Well, we have fun every single time we do one of these videos, but we're gonna keep it a little bit lighter than normal and just focus on one of the most important libraries in the Python ecosystem, which is called Pandas. Pandas is a high performance data frame library that is absolutely ubiquitous across all the data sciences. You can find a bunch of information here at pandas.pydata.com and it's invented by a guy called Wes McKinney from AQR, which is a hedge fund, and it's used all the time, especially in algorithmic trading and most especially in market data analysis, which is what we are going to look at today. But first, what is Pandas? You can kind of think of Pandas as a spreadsheet. You've got rows and columns represented this way. You can read and write data into a Pandas data frame from many sources to many sources. You can select and filter data out of your data frame all in one or two lines of Python code, which of course makes it super flexible and super easy to manage time series data. Let's take a look. So we're gonna to look today at just downloading some historical stock price data and doing a couple very common manip manipulations that are very, very, like I say, common in market data analysis. So we're gonna import a couple libraries here and we'll use <clears throat> Y Finance for market data. And the cool thing about Y Finance is that it actually downloads a Pandas data frame. So you get this warning because Pandas is getting ready for version three, so there's all these changes that are happening. You can ignore those. And you can see that we now have downloaded a couple years worth of data for NVIDIA. And if you look at this, well, this is a Pandas data frame. So if you do type, you can kind of see core Pandas data frame. So what's in here? Well, we have open, high, low, close, adjusted close, and volume data, 447 rows across six columns. So we want to actually take a look at this in a little more detail. So you can use the head method and you just get the five first rows. The tail method similarly gets the last five rows. And what we're gonna do today is calculate some common statistics. We'll do moving average, we'll do a rolling percent change, with a volatility estimator, and then we will do a rolling rank, all in a couple lines of code. Cool, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is set a new column of data to the rolling 20-day average of the closing price. So if I take this out and just look at the closing price for now, you can see that this is a single series of data, like a single column in an Excel spreadsheet. If you do this rolling method, then it takes a rolling window of data and it computes the mean value and then it returns that value. So this is your moving average. And then by setting it equal to a new column, we end up with a new column in our data frame. And you can see here that instead of breaking, Pandas aligns everything by this so-called index, which in our case is the date. So instead of having something weird, we just have NANs. And this is true because we've taken the first 20 days of data and used that to calculate a, an average. So we actually have to throw those away. If we run the first 25 rows of data, you can see that the first 20 are NAN and the last five or six or so are values, okay? So let's do the same thing with a 50-day moving average. Same idea, except 50 days then we will actually compute the rolling volatility. So the same idea, only in this case, we're gonna take the percent change. And we already know that the closing price is a series of data, but when we call percent change, it takes the one day daily return. So this is actually a daily return. We can follow the same procedure as did we, be, we did before with a rolling window of data and then apply the standard deviation instead of the mean. And what that gives us is the, average, or the, the rolling 21 day standard deviation, otherwise known as volatility. If we wanna annualize this number, we can multiply by the square root of 252, and we have a daily 21 day annualized volatility. Very cool, very, very easy. Let's add that to our data frame, and we can see that we now have a new column called vol, in addition to our moving average. Oh, I didn't run this, let me do that, there we go. We have our 50-day and our 200-day moving averages, excuse me, 20-day moving average, 50-day moving average, and our volatility. Next, let's look at the rolling percent rank. So the percent rank basically looks at the last set of data 
and it takes the last data point and it computes what percentile that last data point is relative to the window of data in question. So again, we have our closing prices. Let's take a 21 day window and we call rank and let's do PCT equals true. And that will give us the percentage rank. So for example, on the 11th of October, 95% means that that last price is the 95th percentile price over the last 21 days. We can then add that into our data frame and voila, we have all of these new columns right in our data frame in a couple lines of code. Amazing. All right, so we want to plot some things. So let's take just these three columns, okay? and we will plot those three columns. Boom. So now we have the close, simple moving average, the 20 day window, the 50 day window, all in this plot. Pandas and matplotlib play very nicely together and you can see that we have all the dates aligned. Everything looks really good. The labels are there. So what this actually is, it's a three column data frame and pandas will automatically take the column headers and use that as the legend. Very cool. The next step, let's actually plot historical volatility. So in this case, we are actually going to have two plots, right? We're gonna have the closing price on the plot as well as the volatility, but because volatility is expressed as a percentage, we can't have those on the same axis. So for example, here, we will actually output the axis from the plot. We will then plot a secondary axis with vol, V-O-L, and add that to the plot and show it. And you can see that the blue line is the closing price, which is associated with the price axis on the left. And the orange line is the rolling annualized volatility, which is the axis on the right. So you can see that as the Nvidia stock price has rallied from about 110 to about 140 over the past month or so, the annualized standard deviation or volatility has fallen off a cliff. Feel sorry for all those long options holders, don't you? Finally, let's plot the percent rank. So the percentage rank, as I described, is the last data point in the window. What percentile is that relative to all those data points in the window? And this is a really, really good way to have your price points oscillate, meaning that they go from a range, basically from zero to one, and it kind of can show you these extreme values or lack thereof, over time. So you can see the last couple data prints or the last couple prices of NVIDIA are at the, you know, if we, we can just look at this 95th percentile, 100 percentile. So over the last, you know, rolling month or so, we are at some highs. And we, we can kind of look at that in a lot of different ways, but it's nice to have this oscillating on a, on a single chart. Cool. Thanks for joining me. This is a, a whirlwind tour of Pandas. I just want to reiterate, I tell this to all my students that Pandas is the most important library in your tool belt. As you can see, we just demonstrated three super simple ways in about eight minutes to do some really great exploratory data analysis on your market data. Join me next time, subscribe to the channel to get updates of all these great videos, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.